Hey everyone, welcome to this episode. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer. Today's conversation is with Rob Johnson, who is the owner of Rocky Mountain Dog, which is a lifestyle brand based out of Alberta that sells adventure gear for dogs. He is a graduate of the University of Calgary's Commerce and Economics program, and in his early career, Rob spent a lot of time working as a project manager at various organizations. And while doing so, he also taught at Mount Royal University um, in the School of Project Management. And in 2018, Rob began Rocky Mountain Dog with a mission to inspire others to explore the mountains, making memories along the way with their dogs. And he really joined Sam to discuss the, the highs and lows of running a business, especially during COVID, and how and when he decided to take Rocky Mountain Dog, which he began in 2018, from a side hustle into a full-time venture in August 2020. It was a really interesting conversation. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, in the description to the video, I've linked uh, Rob's info, including uh, the Rocky Mountain Dog website, and of course, uh, Sam's info. Thanks and enjoy. Hey, Rob, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Yeah, um, just was commenting on your beautiful background. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about um, what that significance of your background is? We'll just hop right in. Uh, sure. So that picture there is of uh, Butch. So that hike was up at uh, Devil's Thumb at Lake Louise, hmm. uh, probably approaching two years ago. And um, that picture there um, was used on a magazine, uh, Pet, Pet Connection. So um it's one of my favorite pictures of, of butch it is like he looks like such a puppy there but something tells me that he's not actually a puppy because that would have if that was two years ago um so how old would he have been in that picture he would have been two years and he's okay. he even now when people see him they think he's a, a puppy because he's got <laughs> such a have you yeah, ever seen uh, those pictures where they put like animals and then amongst stuffed animals and then taken pictures of them and been like, guess the animal, <laughs> which is that cute, which is that cute that he could be part of like a children's toy collection. Um, so very versatile. You said uh, you were on the cover of, uh, Butch was on the cover of Pet Connection. How did that happen? Um, they just, uh, they just reached out. So they reached out and, uh, saw the picture and asked if they could use it on one of their, their covers. And then, um, that was like in the winter time. So I didn't really hear anything. And then, um, it was months later when they, um, you know, showed me and said, Hey, we want to use this. So it was in one of the summer editions of the the magazine and um yeah it turned out great turned out fantastic so that leads us into a little bit about how we know each other which is not much and um i almost feel like there's a connection <laughs> an accidental connection between pet connection and us because somehow we found out ourselves connected on linkedin and i love of course your content because there is a beautiful <laughs> dog there's butch and then hearing a little bit more about, you know, your story behind Rocky Mountain Dog. And um, at the same time, you know, getting started with really reaching out to other guests through other uh, serendipitous moments. Uh, and you were gracious enough to reply to my message. And um, we had a call like before this a couple of weeks ago and booked this. So thank you so, so much um, for coming on to talk to our third and fourth year uh, DAL students, um, many of whom are accounting majors. So that's kind of where the conversation will likely be directed towards, just in case anybody's like, what are they talking about? <laughs> Don't worry, we won't get too debit and credit -y, but, <laughs> uh, but the, the bed will maybe kind of wind in a little bit of accounting items. So Rob, um, just for a bit of background, uh, you know, First name, last name, uh, company, and where are you located? What you, what you selling? Yeah, so my name is uh, Rob Johnson and I'm the owner of Rocky Mountain Dog, uh, which was established uh, three years ago. And we sell adventure gear for dogs. So that would be harnesses, leashes, collars, 
and a whole bunch of other accessories. And we're always uh, rolling out new, new and exciting products um, every year. Fantastic. And Rocky Mountain Dog. So are you, uh, one of the reasons why I was kind of drawn to you as well is because of the Calgary connection. So I believe you're in Calgary right now. Are you still in Calgary right now? Yes. Yeah, we're based out of uh, Calgary, Alberta, and everyone thinks I live in Canmore. I was, um, was going to say, because it's so close and has really good food, but it, you're not quite Canmore. Not, not quite. Um, but obviously with uh, what we do and the need to cr always create content, we're uh, always out in the mountains, um, either around Canmore or Kananaskis country or in Banff. Not, not a bad way to blend in work and life and play really. <laughs> uh, like when you're with Butch and you're driving up to Canmore or to Banff or Lake Louise, uh, and if you were to be stopped, so right now we're, we're recording this in the middle of COVID, Nova Scotia's locked down and you aren't allowed to leave your county unless like it's for like work or something. So in theory, if it was the same for you guys, you would get pulled over and you'd be like, no, 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 officer, like we're, we're, doing, we're working. And because the, it's just so wonderful that you designed your life in such a way that work in play and adding value, um, it kind of becomes the synthesis, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, I'm really interested to hear how you got here. So one of the things that, again, drew me towards uh, you is we have another common link, not just Calgary, but you were an instructor at a university in Calgary. How about you tell me a little bit about that and how you got involved and how that kind of relates to your education background? Yeah. Um, so prior to Rocky Mountain Dog, um, my career has always been uh, project management. So um, probably for at least, uh, I'd say probably 15 years, I taught at Mount Royal University in their continuing education program for um, project management. So I taught um, whether it was uh, risk, integration, scope, time, uh, HR, uh, all the different modules for people to take and get their certificate in project management. And um, I never went to school to become a project manager. I, I uh, went to University of Calgary and got a BA in, in economics and a Bachelor of Commerce. Um, and then the first job I got was at a company called Critical Mass, which is a digital agency. And there is when I started my, my career in project management and did that for, for 20 years um, and didn't want to do it until retirement. And that's when I started to think about uh, uh, different ideas. And that's how I transitioned into um, Rocky Mountain Dog. Um, so that I wouldn't retire um, being a project manager and doing something that I truly love. And it's great because I get to go to the mountains and take pictures of, of Butch. Yes. And call it work because it is work. And call it work. <laughs> it is work. <laughs> it is work. So, Absolutely. And we'll, um, we'll kind of, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just before we get off the instructor part, because a number of our students either, um, during the school year or more often I find it when students have graduated and they're coming back a year or two or three or my CPA students that have completed their designation um, will often ask hey how can I get into being an instructor at a university sometimes they say professor instructor I think what they mean is in general how do I get in order to be in front of students and help students just a little bit um, you know with their path on becoming who you know the skills that they wish to master so do you have any advice uh, for, you know, potential new grads or perhaps even people that have, are a few years post-grad on how to get involved in teaching higher education like yourself? Um, yeah, I think what I'll just use as an example of what, what I did. So within project management, um, there's a designation which is called the PMP. So that's the project management professional. And I knew that that was kind of the, the gold star as far as um, certification within my field. Um, so first thing I did was I got, got that. And then um, with that, that gives you the credibility 
uh, potentially teaching. And I got a hold of the, uh, at the time, the program manager for uh, project management at Montreal University. Um, and I took their, I did take their, their classes. Um, so I went through and, and got it and I thought they did a really good job at it. Um, and I had a passion for what I was doing at the time. So I contacted the program manager and said I was interested in teaching. And, um, and that's how I got, I got started. And they uh, gave awesome. me an opportunity to, to teach. And I must say, I was not the, it was pretty nerve wracking, um, probably the first couple of times, uh, yeah. since I didn't have that, that experience or, or background or, uh, and a lot of the individuals were a lot older than, than I was at the time. Um, but over time you get, you get, uh, very used to it. And I think just, uh, it's always kind of, I guess, connecting to the right individual or person to kind of get that, that, uh, step in the door. And, um, that's what I did. Perfect. No, and, uh, I like how you touched on that. It was nerve wracking and that, um, you think it's because like you didn't have a background necessarily in teaching, but it's just nerve wracking whenever you care. And whenever you're in front of a, you know, an audience or a group and you want to add value, that is nerve, that is nerve wracking. And, but what I like is that you acknowledge that and did it anyways, because, you know, why not? It's something that you wanted to do. And it's something that comes with the territory. So it's cool reaching out, asking how to be involved. Um, you know, that led to a direct, you know, next opportunity. And you taught there, did you say for 15 years? It was a long time. Yeah. yeah so, I'd say it was uh, 15 years. And, um, I just kind of gradually stopped doing it because Rocky Mountain Dog was getting so busy that I just didn't have the, the time. Otherwise I'd still be teaching there. Perfect. So that's a great kind of transition back to Rocky Mountain Dogs. So when you were teaching at Mount Royal, you were also working in project management. So working in project management, teaching um, project management. And um, so you were found yourself, you know, into this career, great career, something that you were passionate at one point. And then what kind of changed? Like what helped, what brought you from that career and transitioning you to entrepreneurship and to being an, a founder and an owner of a company? Um, what, what changed? So I think, um, I guess, being a project manager, um, I, I, you know, I, I loved what I did and I had passion for it for sure. Um, but it's, it's hard work and um, you're always, um, delivering results for, for somebody else. And, um, as a project manager, um, really your job is to present information and options to decision makers to, to make those decisions and, and, uh, and shepherd them along the way. So, um, there wasn't any real, um, I guess, ownership or true accountability in what I was doing. And I wanted something that was, uh, my my own um so that was one reason to kind of uh start uh, rocky mountain dog and then the second reason that i alluded to was i knew that i didn't want to do this forever and i wanted a an exit out of project management and and do something else and i you know tried a few things in entrepreneurship and they never really went anywhere, but I think from all those uh, mistakes and uh, things that I did along the way that didn't work, I kind of learned from those and finally kind of came up with the right recipe um, to start Rocky Mountain Dog. And um, I truly, you know, wanted something for my, my second career. Um, and why not have a dog company and go hike in the mountains and take pictures and yeah. sell dog stuff. I yeah, thought that was a, a great Absolutely. idea. Yeah, that is a fantastic idea. And then you made it, made it work and brought it to fruition. So I really just want to step back and you said mistakes, but I think, you know, uh, I'm going to push back a little bit har harshly on that because it's only, I don't know, 
not to be too cliche, but like we've all done things that, you know, perhaps they didn't lead to the next thing or, you know, but we did them and uh, there's some sort of pride. I don't know about you, but I feel pride when I try something and it doesn't work out or it works out, but not as well as I thought it would. Or sometimes, I don't know, um, sometimes when I just like have a crash and burn in an awful, awful like humiliating fail, I'm like, well, that is one uh, where I can get some really good lessons from. And perhaps I can relate to somebody else in the future, or I can pick something from that and bring it to the next thing. So I'm just going to push back. Would you call them mistakes as in you wish you could erase them and they never would have happened? Or like, like you kind of alluded to, they were a good place where you learn lessons um, that and tools and tricks and tips and things that led you to really designing your own lifestyle where you know taking your cute dog to the mountain to be out in the fresh air and uh, designing your lifestyle um, did those things kind of contribute to that in a way that you wouldn't want to remove them now um I, yeah uh, absolutely so i i kind of look back and i kind of um connect connect the dots and if i didn't try those try those things and and learn from them and learn from those um uh, mistakes or just miscalculations, I don't think I would be, um, where I am today. And I think, um, and the only way to figure things out is to, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm more of a risk taker than some individuals. So, um, you gotta, um, try it out and see how it's, how it's going to work. And I think also, um, you're not going to be, you know, very good at certain things when you, when you start out and learn it, doing, um, taking ideas and trying to execute on them. Um, it's a very good learning experience so that when you finally get to something that you, um, really, and, I, and also what I learned too, is some of the things I tried, I mean, you know, you gotta have extreme passion for what you're going to do to make it successful. And what I've realized, with Rocky Mountain Dog compared to some of the other things I tried is um, the passion just wasn't, wasn't there. Um, whereas with Rocky Mountain Dog, I'll put in all the effort because it's something that I love doing. Perfect. So yeah, so tell me, like, what do you have an average day or actually before we get to that before we get to that because you said you tried out different things but I just want to make the clear connection that when you were trying out the different things that led to the lessons that led to Rock Mountain Dog you still maintained your your full-time job is that correct or um full-time hours like you still had your kind of day thing going on while you were building those businesses is that correct absolutely um that's one thing I've you know really uh i think learned from was um you need you need money and cash flow uh as much as possible and to start something like this you need you need a lot of money um mm -hmm. uh, and um i didn't quit until like it was i, I kept a full-time job as long as i could yeah uh, and then how did you, you never know time to transition um how did I know? I think I just um, truly, how did I know? I think, I think I, it, there was some luck with, uh, with COVID um, and, and um, with the, the dog industry and um, the way things were or, or are kind of still with all the lockdowns and restrictions and um, restrictions on shopping that really accelerated Rocky Mountain Dog and the online sales. Um, and I could just tell that there was a lot of connection with the brand and the sales were really increasing. Um, and I really needed to, like the, the demands on my time were um, full-time on Rocky Mountain Dog. And I was also had a full-time regular yeah. day job. Um, <laughs> and things just weren't uh, sustainable. I would say at the time, I probably didn't have enough money, like, like uh, truly uh, from the Rocky Mountain Dog side to quit, but I thought that um, over time the sales would, would grow. Um, and I just, 
just had to bite the bullet and, and uh, make that decision and quit uh, the regular day job and focus on Rocky Mountain Dog full time. And that was in August of, of last year, 2020. Okay. So yeah, so you're kind of one foot on the dock, one foot on the boat, like working there, working there. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, like I have my proof of concept. I understand the numbers. I understand risk. You know, I taught risk. I understand what I'm doing. I'm looking at where we are. I'm looking at the environment and now's the time. So I don't know, would you say that there's never, um, hearing you, it almost sounds like there's never going to be like this perfect time necessarily, or like all, all the things. And at some point you kind of have to just sit back to make a gut check and decide what to do. I absolutely, there's, there's no like uh, clear green light. There's lots of shades of uh, green, <laughs> yellow, red, yeah. um, but you just gotta, you know, there, there comes a point in time where it's like, okay, um, there's, there's no like absolute sign, but in your gut, if you think it's the right thing to do, then you gotta trust your instincts. Perfect. So you did mention a bit about um, COVID and alluding to it being an opportunity just for, uh, because this is rather counterintuitive to a lot of people out here. Maybe let's just uh, paint the picture. So I believe that it's because, you know, as you mentioned with lockdowns, people aren't able to shop, people aren't able to sometimes go to work, people aren't able to do a lot of their regular social items. Uh, how has that impacted the the dog and specifically the adventure dog and dog um, uh, kind of yeah good feel? Um, I I think you know like right like looking at it right now I think um, the Rocky Mountain dog is in the the sweet spot of a few things. Um, when I started Rocky Mountain dog I you know, I didn't realize that this was all going to, to uh, work out the way it did. But um, the first thing is, is that Rocky Mountain Dog fo focuses on adventures with your, getting outside with your dog and making memories along the way. And um, obviously with, with COVID and the restrictions and the lockdown, you can't see your friends. Um, really the only thing that you can do is be outside with your dog and go on these adventures so that's one wicked wicked um sweet spot um the second one would have been the ability for people to shop and go to stores really got got uh restricted and truly we're we are um we don't have a physical storefront we are an online brand um so what people are, are searching for stuff to buy and people are a lot more comfortable buying online. Um, and we saw a huge gain in, in online sales um, because of the restrictions and because we really worked on the brand and um, really focused on um, being on Google and Facebook ads and all the right spots where people are looking. And then lastly, everyone got a dog. So if you didn't have a dog before COVID, <laughs> Um, you have one now um so <laughs> or you got more i got more <laughs> or, you got, or you got more yeah um so it was just a perfect kind of um storm that really accelerated our growth what's really neat is you had a passion um you had first you saw a need you saw your life and you were like you know this is great love this love teaching this but you had a passion to kind of have more control over your destiny, con con contribute directly to something versus contributing to somebody else's, you know, hopes and dreams. Um, and then you did it and you had the proof of concepts and you went for it, you learned, you adjusted. And what I really want to focus on is that you built the brand and that you built this item. You didn't react to COVID. You were there. You had put in the work, you had have strong brand, you knew who your market was, and then you benefited from some favorable timing. Right. Um, but you didn't, it's, it's so often you're know, hear from people, Oh, I should have invested in Bitcoin or, Oh, I should have done this or, Oh, I need to go do this. And they're always like half a step behind. And that sometimes, you know, not to psychoanalyze it, but they're playing somebody else's game or they're playing it for the wrong reasons. They're playing for it because they feel like they should be doing it or they need to be on trend versus, you know, betting on yourself, um, understanding what can I make work based on, the current circumstances based on, you know, history, based on 
um, my strengths and my weaknesses based on my lessons. And then if you benefit from environmental, you know, surroundings, like that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And our, our strategy and our execution have never, never changed. So we, our, our brand is the most important thing. And, um, we focus on inspiring others to explore the outdoors with their dogs and make memories along the way. And we focus on adventure and we focus on the connection between people, dogs and their environment. And it would have worked, um, it, COVID accelerated everything extremely quickly. Um, but I, I have, I had no doubt in my mind um, that this strategy, um, was going to work is working and it's we're it's only going to get get bigger uh, rocky mountain dog absolutely all right so tell me about what are some of the challenges um you said that going up to the mountains with butch that's content creation so what are some of the challenges with content creation um with building a brand um in, in general so is it as easy as you know flipping on the camera and and taking a bunch of pictures and then it takes care of itself or is there a more deliberate process behind behind all the magic um what's the uh uh so i guess one of the challenges is trying to take pictures of, of butch um he's never uh he never sits still um so I guess, um, yeah, like one of the pillars of Rocky Mountain Dog is content. And we spend a lot of time uh, going to the mountains and, and taking pictures or video um, that we can use. I think the, the biggest challenge is to, you know, taking this creative that we have um, and then putting it on the different platforms. So, um, taking the, the photos or videos, um, editing those photos and videos, um, and then putting it on to the various platforms. And I think right now um, it just comes down to, to time and having the, the going out there is the, the easy part. The hard part is all the stuff that happens afterwards and having the time to go through the videos and the photos and, and um, put them onto the platforms. And I think right now, um, you know, one of the challenges right now is we, we do a good job with Facebook and, and Instagram and TikTok, but there's, uh, for example, there's lots of stuff that I want to do on um, Pinterest um, or, or uh, um, YouTube, but it's just, yeah, don't like, uh, like that's a, you need another body to kind of help you out trying to get more content onto to uh these other platforms and it's a trade-off between you know how much money you're going to spend to get get uh more content onto more more platforms yeah uh what is it there's always constraints and you would know better than i would on this but it's like time <laughs> time human power like uh human capital money uh you know not just constraints but like what's the best bang for my buck where do i want to put it um you know having covid ramp up or having covid accelerate your business that must have been you know while people see all the upsides you see the top line um there's also the inventory management that comes into play so you have all of these demands on a growing business um cash flow management inventory management time management um, gosh, uh, it almost sounds, and I know I, I always get a little bit of interest from, from people, my colleagues in particular, when they're like, oh, you're having a non-accountant on. And I was like, absolutely. For so many reasons. A, this is fun. Uh, <laughs> the, um, non-accountants use accounting. It's not like this is, or Ian use accounting tools and tricks and thought processes. Like we aren't like in silos that people may think it's like, it's all mixed. I once said the word strategy in my advanced accounting class and a student like was like, mm. and like what's that? And they're like, oh, you said strategy. This is accounting. And I was like, why the F do you think we're doing this? Like, do you think we're doing this for like for fun? We're doing this so we understand what the picture looks like, what story we're communicating to our users. 
um, and the story that they care about is how is this going to shape the strategy of the company three to five years out? We have to understand how to make the story, what, what happens now, what it looks like. Anyways, so we're not in silos. You deal with inventory management. You deal with cash management. You deal with um, cash flow projections, taxes. Um, is, are there any areas in which, you know, you specifically focus on integrating, you know, the deliberate practice of accounting, maybe one of those items um, into your current, you know, ensuring your strategic uh, and operational success of Rock Rocky Mountain Dog? Um, to be honest with you right now, accounting is probably our, our weakest, <laughs> our weakest link. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and uh, it's definitely, I, I uh, so right now we, um, you know, we're always behind on our taxes. We're, we're um, really kind of unclear our, on our accounting. And actually I'm just like, uh, and there's a lot of things that are gonna happen here this year where um, I can't, um, you know, I'm gonna have to ramp, ramp things up as far as uh, accounting goes. So I've um, hired a, or, bringing on a bookkeeper more more full-time and kind of changing out um how i do accounting um because i recognize that um you know going forward um if i don't have a really really good ha handle on all my financials and how much money's coming in every month and how much money's going out and where exactly are we at so like my, my biggest concern is i can't run out of money yeah. um i need a lot of cash flow um to make sure that i'm uh paying for everything and that this is uh the, the biggest thing the most important thing is i gotta have enough money mm -hmm. um and and the kind of one of the concerns right now is i don't have a good picture on that so um i I'm, I'm gonna yeah. wrap up the accounting and make sure that's done properly yeah no and many would say that that's a good a good issue to have when it's you know relatively small and you're able to you know <laughs> really quickly add up the revenues and really quickly go to the shoebox you know that's not necessarily a kind of a quote good problem to have versus what you're having the scale and the enormity it's you know there's always constraints and you can't do everything at once so it's great um to kind of have that that perspective now. And what's really cool is I always tell my accounting students as well, if they want to go and stay in accounting, that where you're going to add really a lot of value to people is working with non-accountants because yeah, accountants hire accountants, but you know who else hires accountants? Non-accountants. <laughs> like those, that's your business uh, are people that need your expertise so that they can go focus on their business. Um, I just want to bring it back though. So inventory management at the beginning. And I feel like when we did our first call, there was like a bunch of bing, bing, bings in the background and there was you know, integration of different systems. So it seems like you really have your finger on the pulse though, as far as inventory management and your storefront and your, you know, ensuring that all those pieces are in line. Would you say that's more or less accurate? Uh, yes. So um, the, the big uh, one thing I do focus a lot on is, is making sure we have um, the right products and enough products to, to sell. Um, so a lot of my time is spent um, um, looking at new products to bring on board, um, developing those products, and then obviously um, sourcing those products. Um, so uh, a lot of my time is spent um, uh, working with suppliers to, to bring on uh, new products and, and replenish um, stock. Um, a lot of it is uh, like you really got to look months in advance mm. um, and, and put in orders to make sure that you're, you're getting the products in time. Um, and then um, also looking at, at new products to bring on board. And then uh, the, the websites run through Shopify. So um, within Shopify, you can keep track of your, your inventory. Um, and then right now, um, like we were really low on, on things going into May. Uh, we just got a, a, a massive uh, shipment and already like on the, the harnesses, um, like we're just selling 
like hundreds of harnesses and I'm already, uh, and I know that there's probably going to be another shipment in, in July and I'm already worried um, that we might sell out of them um, and not, not have any uh, before the next shipment. So it's always, you know, trying to, trying to have enough inventory on, on hand, but at the same time, um, you know, you can't buy an absorbent amount, otherwise you won't have, uh, you'll, you'll run out of money. So it's just kinda, Yeah. And when you're sourcing money. new products, understanding, okay, how much is this going to cost to ship to me, to ship to the customer? What am I buying for? What's my price like per unit? What am I selling it for? Like all the, what is the likelihood, like what's the, uh, the churn going to be all these things. Like it is accounting. So, you know, I just wanted to really emphasize this, like this accounting thing is a bigger picture. It's like, you know, part of the story or telling the story of the business from behind the scenes, uh, right? As far as management accounting goes, we typically tend to think of accounting um, as, you know, the taxes or the financial statements or the balance sheets or, you know, but so many, so many different things. So I just want to give you a little bit more kudos um, that the inventory management anyways is, uh, is huge. And that's like you said, your fingers on the pulse there and then some, and you're already worried about things that are happening in July. Like you sound like an accountant <laughs> to me. I'd be fooled otherwise. Um, I'm already worried about, yeah, making sure I'm like, I, um, like Christmas is, is uh, well, well on my mind as far as um, how much stuff we're going to need for, for that. And I'm literally going to be putting in orders uh, next week for, that for for that time period okay so hmm, one question uh again this is for our students so i i ask students um what what do you want to hear they're they're my clients right uh what do you want to hear what do you want to ask our guests and one popular one that's come through are what are your book recommendations for other current students or recent grads perhaps something focused on career or life or just in general like what books would you recommend that they put on their must read list oh boy um i'm not gonna have the no i might not have the, their most favorite answer for this but honestly um right now i i i don't have enough time mm -hmm. to uh to be uh, reading uh, like uh, books or anything like that. On the flip side, I just want to say to that is what I what I find myself doing a lot is um, like I'm a, I'm a doer. Like I need to um, figure out how to get onto Shopify instead of you know reading a book about how that's supposed to happen. I I go in and do it. Um, or how do I get onto Pinterest and how do I create ads and how do I, um, uh, get enough, uh, likes and, and, um, enough sales from that instead of, you know, trying to pick up a book and trying to figure that out. Um, I literally go in and do it. And, uh, and, and, and even with, with Rocky Mountain Dog, it's a lot of, um, and I write a whole bunch of stuff. Like I write blogs and I write, um, the whole website is 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 uh, is just just doing things. So I find that um, I find a lot of people will, um, if they're thinking about an idea or execution, um, they're hung up on. Um, well, I want to get on Amazon and sell, so I got to read a whole bunch of books and take a whole bunch of courses um, instead of well, why don't you just take a simple product and um, take a hundred units and try and sell it on on Amazon. Um, so I'm a more of a believer of just, uh, yeah. just doing things instead of trying to um, be stuck in a book and, and not going to the next step. Yeah, no, I, I don't hate that answer. I would just ask one thing to clarify. When you don't know what to do next, uh, when you're doing something, do you consult outside resources or do you phone a friend or? Um, do you I use... Uh, um, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Okay, sorry. I thought you were like the Google, and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Yeah. No. Um. I like it. Just there's a lot uh to be said, and I would agree. Uh, 
just do it, figure it out, um, and get better along the way, <laughs> learn from yourself and then write it. Um, there's actually, ironically enough, a book called show your work. And, uh, it talks about the importance of documenting, um, as you're doing something and sharing it. And that becomes part of like, you know, um, it reinforces, both you and what you're doing and creates content um, to be able to share at the same time. So it's like this really efficient way of learning. Um, and, you know, we talk about before, learn, do, teach, learn something, do something and be able to teach something. And that's what mastery looks like. So no, I, I don't hate that answer. I think maybe the, the students that were like, I just want a, a book to, to read, <laughs> uh, but go read, go read Rob's uh, blogs on his website. That's your book recommendation <laughs> there. If you, if you like dogs and adventure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what do you like to do for fun? Because I tried to book this with you last week and then early this week, and I don't know, like you were, you were just really busy. Um, were you out doing anything in particular? Or? Oh yeah, so I, um, those plans fell through. So I did yeah. have a plan to go to, uh, out to the West Coast and um, we have a new, uh, a new series of leashes and collars called the Pacific Northwest. So I had a plan to go up to, uh, to Whistler and also uh, to Fino to take pictures of, of that. Um, but obviously with uh, all the restrictions, um, wasn't able to do that. So um, what I like to do is fun is I, I really do enjoy, like I going out to the mountains and <laughs> going for a hike and taking pictures of butch um i i love that so i get to do that for for work and then um i really do enjoy um the technical side of what i'm doing as well um and then uh i like uh going camping and just being outside cool. road trips i love road trips road trips do you have a favorite road trip car game either maybe that you play with other people or yourself like are you a license plate game are you like a red car like a punch buggy kind of game or <laughs> it's been a while since i've taken a good road trip uh, <laughs> but... i like i i love uh finding uh a lot what i do now is uh finding places along the way and um like stopping at uh there's so many places you go by on a road trip that you never stop at um, so now a lot of the times, uh, we'll stop at, uh, the roadside turnouts or the waterfalls or the little hikes and, and do those. That's what I enjoy doing. I love that. So true. We're just so, it's a metaphor for bigger things. Uh, we're just so, you know, focused on getting to the next part, next part, you miss out all the, all the cool things in the middle and the middle parts are the ones that oftentimes make the memories. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so what future plans or options are you now considering? Because it sounds pretty much uh, like, why would you go anywhere else? What else is there to do? You know, you're living the dream, you're road tripping, you're hanging out with your best friend, you are um, getting fresh air, you are challenging yourself technically, and you really created and designed this fantastic, you know, business uh, lifestyle for yourself, uh, where do you go from here? And the answer can be more of the same, right? It, the answer can be obviously whatever, but they're all, all valid and all awesome. Yep. Um, so we want to be the, uh, the number one uh, pet brand in, in Canada, Rocky Mountain Dog. And uh, so there's, there's definitely always plans in the works. Um, so there's probably going to be a physical, there could be, could be a physical store presence okay. um, this year. And, and how uh, will people find out if there is a physical store location? Where would you announce that? On our newsletter. Okay. Our Rocky Mountain, our uh, Mo Rocky Mountain Dog newsletter. It will come out on social media too. Not saying that it will, but it, it might. Um, and I'm just asking for a friend because I am very interested to see kind of, um, okay. So physical location, fantastic, uh, possibly, possibly, fantastic. Possibly. And it would really 
amplify our, our brand. We think it would really help um, build our brand having a physical store. Um, oddly enough, there's like we do sell through lots of retailers and we've had some, some interest from uh, major retail uh, chains in, in, our, in our products. Um, so that may be, may be in the works, but again, that is um, that one to your point, you really got to look at all the cost inputs mm -hmm. um, for all the things that go into um, getting these products to the stores and um, the, the chains want a lot of margin on their side. So um, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And then um, the number one, the number one thing is going to be, um, so obviously we have the online channel that we sell through. Um, we want another solid channel that we're, we're selling through to kind of hedge our bets because we don't think, um, you know, people's, it's been great so far, but I think people's habits in a couple of years are gonna change and it's not gonna be so much online. So we really are looking at more physical presence. Um, and then um, our, our, core, our core, core thing is, is the brand. So we're gonna be just amplifying the brand and bringing out new products and then everything else will, will fall into place. Butch, obviously, you know, him in the background for two, two giant pictures, him being the face of Rocky Mountain Dog. Um, where did his name come from? Um, if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> oh. No, it's okay. So his name is... Uh, Sorry. Um, no. I, um, I'll just give you a moment and to say, uh, when I started my consulting company, um, businesses are hard and they're scary. And um, I wanted to make sure that I got motivation from um, people that are bigger and stronger than me. So I'm not sure how much of this would resonate, um, but I named my corp after my Oma and her, her last name because she went through the war and she, you know, she was just somebody in my life that exemplified strength and persistence and what, what would be a bad day for me would have been an amazing day for her at the same age um, in, in her life in Amsterdam, kind of growing up. So I knew that whatever failures I had, whatever you know, mistakes I made um, that I was very fortunate and her having her name on my company helped me, you know, struggle through those, those good, bad times and help me enjoy those good times a little bit more. So uh, I hate to put you on the spot. I just, I love, love when, you know, it's not personal, it's not professional, it's life. And we build our life around things that have meaning and impact to us. Absolutely. Um, so he is uh, named after my dad, um, who passed away a long time ago from cancer. Um, so when I was looking for a name for, for Butch um, and uh, the girlfriend at my time, we were kind of talking about different names. And then um, my dad's name, or that was his nickname. Um, so um, that's how Butch got his name. And, um, you know, he's got a little bit of my dad, you know. Absolutely. And your dad is helping with your business, which I, just amazing. Ah, thank you. So bringing this back to our soon to be grads or our students entering to their fourth year. Uh, many of our students haven't, haven't been in a physical class in over a year and a half. Um, they are, we think we're going to be in class in the fall, um, and we may or may not be. Um, so there's a lot of uncertainties uh, for them, um, for what they see their careers as being, perhaps even 
you know, I'll just put it out there. I'm nervous to go back in classroom and I, you know, I study in class teaching, right? And I'm nervous to be online. Like I'm just, there's an environment of uncertainty, um, even more so without the illusion of certainty. So, you know, I don't want to place this giant weight on your shoulders. Um, so it's not about solving, solving the future um, for them, but rather, you know, imparting some advice for, you know, current Dal accounting majors or just, you know, that age demographic in general. Um, what advice would you have for them in this, in this interesting world that we live in now, world in time? Um, yeah, interesting times. Um, I would, I would say, um, as far as, uh, you know, going, so these grads are, are graduating, they're going to be coming out into the workforce. Um, they've gone through two years of, uh, of COVID. Um, and it's been, yeah, really hard on, on everybody. And I think everyone's yeah. sick of this, uh, of, of what we've gone through. Um, so I would say, um, you know, really just have a awesome relationships with uh, your friends and family. Um, enjoy the time that you, you're, you're going to have, hopefully, where we can um, enjoy being together and really, really cherish that. And um, I would say, you know, as far as your career goes, um, you know, there's the reality is you, there, there's jobs where you need to pay bills and then there's jobs that you truly love. Um, and sometimes they don't always, um, they don't always, you don't always get both, um, but know that, um, you know, if you really are passionate about things, um, you can, you can create the job that, uh, that you're going to love and that's possible. It's possible. This is a question that I ask all of my guests. It is something that I started putting on the back of exams. <laughs> and I'm sure my students were like, who is this person? Uh, when I first started teaching in university, and that is because I'm just so curious. It's so different, so personal. Um, but Rob, how would you define success? Success. Um, How would I define success? I would say um, if you're, jeez, uh, um, how would I find to find the success? Hard one. Yeah. <laughs> it is a hard one. It's worth one bonus mark, just so you know. That's how I uh, I got people to answer them. But it's it's interesting because um, sometimes people take it as a narrow, which is good. Or sometimes people go a little bit more broad, which is good. Um, and then other times people have discussed how it's changed. The definition has changed for them over time. So it really is one of those awful questions yeah. that I just love asking. Yeah. I think I go back to our mission statement. So our mission is to uh, inspire others to enjoy the outdoors with their dogs and make memories along the way. And, um, you know, obviously our our number one goal and the only way that this is successful is that we sell as much things as possible and make sure we control our cost to have um, a good profit at the end of the day. But um, that that's extremely important um, to have that, that, that money come in. Otherwise nothing here is possible. Um, but, you know, with what I see on social media and what I get feedback from, from customers and, what I see in emails and what I see on Facebook or what I see on Instagram or um, people that I talk to is that if, if we could, you know, really, um, and I, and I truly believe like being outside with your dog and enjoying the outdoors and, and making those connections, um, it means a lot to people. Um, and if we can inspire some people to go do that or more people to go do that and have those cherished, cherished times, then, um, that's pretty good to me. Absolutely. Living your best life while inspiring others to live 
their version of their best life, making sure to stop off at those roadside stops and not drive right past them, right? Go enjoy, go live in the moment. Uh, they say that each moment, like the present lasts 2.5 seconds. So go make the most out of each of those 2.5 seconds and make it again and make it again and make it again. And yeah, I love my pups. So I can't, and I, I do like the outdoors, uh, but I love, love, love my pups. And I love watching um, Butch uh, and seeing his presence on social media. So, okay, Rob, we are here. Um, final comments, anything uh, to add, including where can people find you and where can they find um, how to sign up for the newsletter? Uh, so they can find us, uh, the best spot to go to is uh, www.rockymountaindog.ca. Um, so on there, um, that's where our, our website is and all the social media channels that we're on are at the bottom of the page. Um, and then at the bottom of the page as well, you can sign up for the newsletter and uh, we encourage people to, to do that and follow us on on Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok. Um, we post uh, tons and tons of content onto our social media platforms. Perfect. And soon to be Pinterest or possibly soon, <laughs> potentially Pinterest. <laughs> yes. we're, we're on there, but it's the, not the best. Uh, the execution could be better. Hey, watch, watch some growth and action on Pinterest. Thank you so much, Rob. Really appreciate you hanging out with us for this hour. Thank you, Sam.